know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. Let me introduce uh, maybe the series, the series we are um, um, studying on. Maybe it's about uh, two, three messages long, starting with today's message. The series is entitled, Lord, Teach Me to Profit. And today's uh, uh, particular sermon uh, is subtitled, Profiting Through Men Sent by God. Profiting Through Men Sent by God. That's the subtitle. Uh, for this particular message. So remember the series is Lord Teach Me to Profit. Let's start with the word of prayer this morning. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, I am praying. I'm asking for your help this morning. I need you. I need you to touch my mind, touch my lips. Uh, let my tongue be as a pen of a ready writer inscribing the precepts of God upon the hearts of men. Let there be none of me and all of you. And Father, I promise to give you the glory and the honor for the results that will come out of this message for the multi-million, the multi-million uh, uh, dollar kingdom men that shall be birthed out of this series. Even as you showed me, Father, that many will enter into the million dollar realm out of this message. And so, Father, I ask you to help me and touch the, the ears of the saints. Let them hear the word of God. Uh, let it touch their lives. Let it impact their destinies and let lives be transformed to your glory in Jesus' name, amen. Let's start in the book of Isaiah 48. Let's start there. Um, the Bible says in Isaiah 48, verse number 17, it says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit. So the Lord teaches us to profit. And today we're going to begin to learn how to profit and how to begin to make progress, serious progress in our lives. So Lord, it says, I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who teaches you to profit. And it says, who leads you in the way that you should go. So there is a way that you should go. There is a way of profiting. There is a way that leads to profiting. And I believe that the Lord is going to teach us to profit today in the name of Jesus. God gives us uh, uh, giftings. He deposits giftings inside of us. So nobody... Uh, um, came on earth without a gifting. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you, I ordained you. In other words, I ordered and I put something on the inside of you. And that gifting that you get from God is supposed to be turned into profit. And you need to take an inventory of your personal gifts. You need to know the giftings that God has given you. I must know what God uh, has put on the inside of me. My God-given abilities, I must know them. Now, why is this important? When I know my giftings, it means I know what giftings I also do not have. When I realize the giftings I do not have, I begin to celebrate the giftings in other people. Now, watch this. I need the giftings in other people to help me to fulfill my destiny. You cannot and will not Fulfill your destiny with your giftings alone. Now, the Bible says that God gave gifts to men. He gave gifts to men. So every person that you know has a gifting. He has a gifting, a God-given gifting. Now, my giftings, my personal giftings are not only for me. My personal giftings are to help other men. Watch this. If other men do not recognize or celebrate the giftings that God put in me, they miss out on those giftings. The Bible says, he who receives you receives me. So remember, God put a gifting in me that can benefit you, that can benefit your neighbor. God put a gifting in you that does not only benefit you, but it can benefit other people. But listen to what he says. He says, he who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. In other words, when you receive, uh, let's, I'll use myself as an example. When you receive Apostle Rodney Chipoera, you receive the gifting that God put on the inside of me. And then you receive Jesus at the same time. 
So there are things that God put in me to benefit you. Watch this. Follow me. Follow me. It will make sense in a minute. So he says here in Matthew 10 verse number 40, He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. That's the Father. And he says, he who receives a prophet. Watch this. A prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. So there is something from another man that you must receive. There's something from another man that you must receive to help you fulfill your destiny. So you cannot fulfill your destiny outside of the help of other people. And you will understand from what I've shared that if you were the devil, you would fight the progress of men by fighting relationships of men. There are people that you are not at peace with, watch this, but they have things that were deposited in them by God that you need for your destiny to be fulfilled. So he says, he who receives a prophet in the name of, of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And, and, and for the most part, the church understands that. The church knows what that means. You know, receive the man of God. The man of God has something put on the inside of them that is supposed to benefit you, that is supposed to benefit humanity. Here is where the secret is. The Bible then says in the next part, he says, he who receives a righteous man. Now, it's not, it's not a pastor. It's not a man of God. He who receives a, a, a righteous man, Right? In the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So inside the people you know are giftings that when you receive them, you receive a reward. You receive a benefit. That benefit leads to profit. And let me just, let me just drop this bomb. Let me, let me drop this bomb. There is a huge mistake we have made in the body of Christ. This mistake is when we say, and we, and, and we have said it, I've said it, you've said it, your neighbor said it, we've all said it, and it sounds good, it sounds, you know, you know biblical, it sounds nice, it sounds religious, but it, it is absolutely wrong. Let me, let, let me drop this statement. The statement is, all I need is God. That's the statement. All I need is God. Now, we've all said that, and, and, and I'm sure people all around the world, watching all around the world, are shocked. What is this man saying that this, there's something wrong with this statement? That statement, as, as, as genuine as you are sounding, you are right in a sense because we do need God. Yes, and we acknowledge we need God. But God is not all that you need. And even the Bible will back up what I'm saying through the scriptures I'll share with you. You need the help of men, not only the help of God. Watch this. In Luke chapter 2, verse 52, the Bible says, Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God. That means he needed God. And in favor with men. So if all you have is favor with God and you don't have favor with men, you miss it. You miss it. Many have missed it. Many are missing it right now and not fulfilling their God-given assignment or destiny because they are trying to fulfill that assignment outside the help of men and are saying, all I need is God. Yes, you need God. But above that, you need men that God has sent. Let me say this. God answers prayers through men. So, in answer to prayers, God sends a man. In answer to prayers, God sends a man. When you receive that man, and the way you deal with that man determines whether your prayer is answered or is not answered. So, I want to submit to you this morning. How are you handling people that God has been sending your way all these years? The Bible says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter number 4, uh, verse number 15, he says, meditate on these things. So the things I'm going to share with you, I want you to meditate on them, uh, you know, as we go along or later on. He says, meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to these things so that your profiting may appear to all. Remember the title is Lord Teach Me to Profit and the subtitle is Profiting from Men. Profiting from Men that God sends. So remember in answer to, to your prayer, every prayer you pray, the answer comes through a man. Watch this. Your miracle must come through a man. 
Your business breakthrough must come through a man. Your marital breakthrough must come through a man. So the devil tries to have you to have problems with men. So you fail to take delivery of your breakthrough. Just as I was about to finish preparing, the Lord said something really, really profound to me. He said, son, and I, and I wrote this down. He says, how do you know that the spirit of poverty is operating in an individual? How do you know? He says, you see it manifesting through negativity towards men. Remember, you've heard that, you know, uh, your attitude determines your altitude. Now, what's that all about? It is your attitude towards people that God sends your way. Your attitude towards people that God sends your way. Now, God, in answer to your prayer, I'll repeat this time and time again because you've got to get it. God, in answer to your prayer, he sends a man. That man has giftings. That man has abilities. That man has resources. That man has connections that will help you and answer the prayer you have been praying. So God never answers prayers independent to people. The Bible says, God said, I sought for a man, right? To stand in the gap that I would not destroy the land. So God does not do things on earth independent to men so god uses men i'm gonna drum that in and you're gonna get it today god uses men he uses men to bless you he uses men to transform your life all right i'll share another scripture with you the bible says in isaiah 43 verse number four since you were precious in my sight you have been honored and i have loved you now he tells us how he has loved us therefore i will give men for you so God gives men for you so that your life can profit. God gives men for you. Now, God said to me, he said, son, I, 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 I value men. I know what I put in men, but men do not recognize what I put in other men. And so mankind is suffering. The body of Christ today is suffering because of not understanding the mystery of the blessings put in men or giftings put in men for you and I's advantage psalm chapter number 8 and 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 I want I want I want to read the full scripture because in the full scripture it really you know paints a powerful picture you know the psalmist was 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 just pondering on some things and he says uh, in Psalm 8, I'm in Psalm 8 from verse number 3. He says, when I consider your heavens, he was talking to God. He says, when I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon, the stars, powerful things that you created, right? Which you ordained. You know, I, I considered all those things and I saw that those things are really wonderful. And he says, but, but, but God, you have this obsession about man. And he says, what is man? What is man? That you are so mindful of man. And the son of man that you visit him, a big God visiting men. And, and so God sees men and he knows what he put in men. And so even angels were surprised how, 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 how God has this, uh, for lack of a better word, obsession about men. God gave dominion to men because man is so important to God because God knows what he put in men. So he says, what is man that you are so mindful of him? And the son of man that you visited him. And as God was ministering to me about this scripture, he said, I put a lot of great things in men that unfortunately humanity does not recognize. And when we recognize these giftings in other men, we will begin to benefit from what God deposited on the inside of those men. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 14, verse number 28, it says, in a multitude of people is a king's honor. In a multitude of people is a king's honor. So the more people you know, the more honor you will receive, the more greatness you are likely to get. Because the more people that I know, the more people I have access to, the more people that I have a relationship with, I can benefit from more giftings. I've got access to more giftings. I've got access to more abilities. I've got access to more resources. So you cannot do it alone, child of God. You can't do it alone. You need men. So he says, in a multitude of people is a king's honor. So even kings, presidents, 
uh, 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 captains of industry. They need men. You need men. All right? You need the constituency. Let me speak it in political language. He says, but in the lack, when Proverbs 14 verse 28, in the lack of people is the downfall of a prince. So people begin to fall. People begin to, to, to lose their kingdoms when they begin to lose people. Why? Because in the people that you have are abilities and giftings that God has released unto them that can help you. Nobody has it all. Nobody has it all. We all have something to contribute in the lives of other people. God hides his greatest gifts in some of the most flawed vessels. People are flawed, but they are still gifted. People are not perfect, but they are still gifted. People make mistakes, but they are still gifted. And watch this. God hides his greatest gifts in some of his most flawed vessels. And you just have to look at the Bible and we'll go through that. So it is those who are not judgmental, those who are patient, those who love, and those who are discerning that can extract value from those God-given giftings. So there are people that are a gifting to humanity. You are a gifting in somebody else's life. You can change somebody's life. But if somebody does not receive you as the gifted person that you are, they miss the benefit of the gifting that God has given you. No man can make it alone. We all need other people. All right? You know, the, the, the man of God who's, who's you know, Mark, uh, the psalmist there, you know, I, I'm just acknowledging him there. That man, I've not seen anybody play the keyboard like that man. Really, really profound, powerful gifting. But him playing that keyboard alone without the drama, you see, already it means that, you know, the song will be incomplete, right? And, 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 and without even the choir and other things. So, so we, we, we need each other to, pu to pull resources and giftings and abilities from each other so that we can have a complete sound in this particular case. And so it's so important, children of God, to understand that we cannot make it alone. God never meant for us to make it alone. So limited success has been because of limited relationships. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's so profound. Limited success has come because of limited relationships. I can tell by spending time with somebody whether this person is going to succeed or not. Because within the first you know, 10, 20 minutes of talking to somebody, you can already pick their attitude towards other people. So if somebody has a negative attitude towards other people, it means that they are not going to benefit from a whole lot of people. So that means the success of that person is going to be limited. And I want you, child of God, to learn to deal with everybody, not just people of like mind. No, not just people of like mind, not just people of like spirit. And the Lord said to me today that learn to deal, children of God, with difficult people. Because some of your breakthroughs are coming through and are going to come through difficult people. You can't only deal with people you like. Because there are some things that you need in your life that are going to be sent by God through people that you don't like. Even if you don't like the person, they might still have some message for you from God. They might have some ability that you need in your business, in your career, in your church, in your ministry. You don't have to like them. You just have to learn to deal with them. There's a message I taught many, many years ago, doing business in a hostile environment. And so many times Christians, we are guilty of, of, of shunning away from, from, from unbelievers. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, do you know I answer a whole lot of your prayers through unbelievers? Now, I know that will shock some people. God will answer prayers through unbelievers. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So God, will, if God could use a donkey... God can use an unbeliever. And so there are answers to your prayers that can come through unbelievers. So this thing of you only hanging around or talking to your clique and, and, and your prayer group and, and, and the, the people on your WhatsApp group and, 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 and not you know, communicating or having a relationship with other people, 
outside of that group is what has limited your success. Because you and your buddies, you, you, you're normally pretty much on the same level. So if you are on the same level, who is going to lift up the other person? And a lot of people in the body of Christ, we're making corrections, please follow me. A lot of people in the church and in the body of Christ have a problem with wealthy people. Whenever people see wealthy people, for the most part, for the most part, they begin to question where their wealth comes from. They begin to, 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 to speak against wealthy people. And, and, and you know, you know we, we mock wealthy people, we speak against them. And watch this. Whatever grace you speak against, you will never benefit from. Because speaking against is dishonor. And when you dishonor, you shut the door of access and you shut the door of favor to whomever or whatever gifting that you dishonor. And so the Bible says um, in the book of uh, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter number 4, verse 9 to 12, two are better than one. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. But verse 10, for if they fall, one will lift up his companion. So you need other people. On your journey of rising, you need other people. You need other people in your life for you to rise. Nobody makes it alone. No one rises alone. Because the giftings that I have on the inside of me by myself are not enough. For me to fulfill my destiny. So my destiny is men dependent. My destiny is dependent even on other men. I need other men to help me to fulfill my destiny. Nobody can do it by themselves. We need the help of other people. So when the devil fights your progress, he fights it by fighting your relationships. Fighting your relationships. And God blesses us through relationships. Relationships are a currency in itself. Relationships are a currency in themselves. So, so you can pay things using money, but you can also pay for things using relationships. And I want you to value people God sends in your life. Remember, in answer to prayer, God sends a man. In answer to prayer, God sends a man. How you receive that man determines whether your prayer is answered or not. So if, God, if, if you pray to God and God sends a man and you refuse to receive that man because you don't like that man, what happens is that you then forfeit the answer to the prayer. So God must help us to get the answers to our prayers, watch this, by helping us to deal with people. Listen to this. Some of the prayers that you pray to God, God will not answer the prayer through people you like or through your friends or through your relatives. God can even answer a prayer through someone you don't like. God can answer your prayer through an unbeliever. God can answer a prayer through the most unlikely people. Check every relationship you have. Are you benefiting from that relationship? Do you have an attitude against people? Do you say, I'm not a people person? If you say you're not a people person, it means you're not a destiny-fulfilling person because you will fulfill your destiny through men. The fulfillment of your destiny is going to be through men. You need men in your life. You need men in your life. Men bring answers to what you have prayed unto God for. So remember, God does not answer prayers directly to you. He says the prayers through people. So you got to recognize that prayers are answered through men. Hallelujah. I pray that you are being blessed. Now, so that remember the enemy fights our relationships. I'm going to read uh, a, 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 couple, a couple of scriptures here. The Bible says uh, in the book of Deuteronomy 32 verse number 30, he says one can chase a thousand and two can chase 10,000. One can chase a thousand but two can chase 10,000. That's exponential growth through relationships. Exponential growth through relationships. So what you can do by yourself is 1,000. But when it's two people, it's not 2,000. It's 10,000. Because there's power in connecting with other giftings. There's power in benefiting from other giftings. So on your journey, on your journey to success, you're going to meet different people. And all of them have different giftings, but all of them have different flaws. Don't focus on the flaws. 
Because many times God hides his greatest giftings in some of the most flawed vessels. Shift a lot of prayers and, and direct a lot of your, of your prayers to, Lord, uh, 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 help me to manage the relationships that, you, you, that, that I have. You send people my way sometimes because of my attitude. I have rejected men. And in rejecting the men, I have rejected the answers. Listen to this. Listen to this. Any man who you have blocked on your phone, who you are not talking to, or whoever you have issues with and you are not in talking terms, you have blocked the possibility of any breakthroughs coming through that person. And so the Bible says, as far as it is up to you, be at peace with all men. Let me give you a scripture that will, 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 will really, really bless you. The Bible says in the book of um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 17, very, very powerful scripture. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 17, he says, honor all men, all of them, including men you don't like, including people you don't get on with. Honor them. Vape chinjimbo chavo. Honor all men. Not only your friends, not only your church people, not only your clique. Honor all men. Why should I honor all men? Because you never know what is going to come through that man. You never know what is going to come through that woman. You never know what's going to come through the person you're not talking to. Honor them. And it takes humility for you to honor people. People have giftings put in them by God, which you don't, do not have. Which you do not have. And so, when I block a person, I am blocking any possibilities. Listen to me. Within every relationship that you get into is an opening up of possibilities. Opening up of possibilities. Opening up of possibilities. And so, if I were the devil and I'm not, if I were the devil... I would make sure that the relationships that you need are the ones that I fight. The relationships you need for where God wants to take you. If I were the devil, I would fight those particular relationships and frustrate those particular relationships. We're going to be blessed today. God's going to help us today. And so the Bible says, we're in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 17. He says, honor all men, right? Love the brotherhood. Love the brotherhood. Now notice it didn't say the brethren. Because if you said the brethren, it means you just love the people in church. The brotherhood, that is mankind. Love mankind. Right? And then it says, honor the king. So there's something in the king that can bless your life. There's something God deposited in the king that can bless your life. And the pin code for accessing what is in the king is honor. Dishonor closes relationships. Dishonor closes access. Dishonor shuts down opportunities. Dishonor shuts down possibilities. And so, you know, it's good to honor men of God and you must honor men of God. But the Bible says here, yeah, honor all people. All people. Because there's something you can get from all people. One man dealt with correctly by you can change your life. Imagine the life of Ruth minus Boaz. If Ruth had an attitude towards Boaz, she would have missed her destiny. You've got to check your attitude every day. Pray about attitude. Lord, remove stinking thinking. Remove this stinking attitude. Remo Lord, whatever is in me that speaks dishonor and shuts doors and closes possibilities, my Father, my God, remove it from my life. In the name of Jesus, I need your help. I have been failing to deal with people because I have been only wanting to deal with people who I like, people I grew up with. Listen to me. People you grew up with, God bless you, thank God for them. They can be part of your past, but not part of your future. Learn to deal with new people in your life. Learn to relate with new people in your life. God can bless you through people that you don't like. You don't like their character. Forget their flaws. Forget their character. Focus on the gifting. Focus on what God put on the inside of those people that is for your benefit. I'm going to say this. 
I know that you know a lot of people will disagree with me. A lot of people will come online and, and some will swear at me and say whatever. But those who will hear me will benefit. The church has failed to deal with politicians. And yet, there are things in the hands of politicians that the church needs. The land is in the hands of politicians. And the church needs land to build the church. But because of our preconceived ideas about relationships, we have refused as the church to learn to deal with the politicians, to extract the value from the politicians. And this has got to change. Many churches would have been built by now if we have had understood as the church that it's not to our advantage to mock politicians, it's not to our advantage to fight politicians, but we must find a way of dealing with difficult people. We must find a way of dealing with unbelievers. We must find a way of dealing with nasty people. David had to learn to deal with Saul who wanted to kill him. And David found a way to still honor Saul. And he found himself on the throne. So there are many relationships that we have not benefited from because of our own personal attitude. And, you know, I hear people say some of the most crazy things. You know, uh, I, I, I'm an introvert. I don't talk to people. I don't like hanging around people. I just like to be alone. In other words, you are saying you, you, you want to be poor. You want to be limited. You don't want to talk to people. Listen to me. All those grudges you have with people, you got to stop that today. You've got to unblock people from your phone today because you are unblocking possibilities. Something can come through that person. A breakthrough can come through that person. I'm not talking about a stalker or somebody who's just, you know, making a lot of noise and just being difficult. But they're just people that, you know, you had a small misunderstanding with and you just block them. So, so, so when you block them, you block the possibility of something that maybe might want to come through that, that particular person. And so I want us to mend relationships that we have, key relationships that we, we have even or have had in the past, we've got to make sure that we mend those bridges because some of those people, they can speak to people who you don't speak to but you need. I call them divine recommenders, people who can recommend you to people in high places. And so we've got to learn how to deal with people as the body of Christ. So we live amongst men and we need men. We live amongst men, church, and we need men. I'm going to say some statements here that I want you to catch and I want you to get. We live amongst men and we need men because we live in this world, we live in the cosmos. And in the cosmos, you've got to learn to deal with people, right? You can't say, all I need is God because you need favor with God and favor with men. And when I have favor with God and favor with men, my life is transformed. One king can change your life, Esther. One king can like you, Esther, and your life changes. In this kingdom, it doesn't matter who doesn't like you, but it matters who likes you. When the right person likes you, they can change your life. With one phone call, one recommendation, a gifting without a recommendation is a frustration. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's a fresh download. A gifting... Without a recommendation is a frustration. David was gifted at playing the harp, but where was he? At the backside of the desert. It didn't take God to recommend him. It took a man to recommend him. A man recommended because they wanted somebody to play the harp for Saul. Saul did not know David, but there was a man who knew David, and he knew the giftings of David. And so that man was a bridge between David and the king. So there are people who are bridges between you and the king that you need. There are king makers People who can make you a king. They might not be a king themselves, but they, they can connect you to the king. They have the right doors. Doors that you don't have access to. But you need those doors to fulfill your destiny. One king can change your life. Listen to me. The life of Ruth would have continued in frustration without Boaz. Sometimes you hear women saying, I don't need a man. I don't need a man. That is rubbish. That is not true. You need a man. 
You need a man in your life. As beautiful as you are, you can't make a baby without a man's involvement. Church, you've got to understand these things. These things are so profound because the devil is slowing us down by making us being petty, having small arguments with people, you know, who are speaking things that we don't mean, things we're not supposed to say. It's unnecessary. You've got to just humble yourself and, and, and allow yourself to, 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 to say you need people. I need people. I need other people. I need help. It takes humility to admit you need help. And some of the people that, 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 that I'm talking to right now online, you know there are times when you needed help, but you were just too proud to say, I need help. And you missed on an opportunity because you refused to acknowledge that you need help. I want you to say it, learn to say it. I need help. That means I need another person to help me in my life. Lord, help me to be humble enough to ask for help. Help comes from God. Yes, our help comes from God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. But it comes through men. It comes through men. It comes from God, through men, to men. I need the help of men. God sent me men to help me and help me to receive them when they come. Lord, remove any attitude in me that has driven away men that you sent to help me. Help me, Lord, to receive men that you sent to me. I need people. You got to say that every day. I need people. I need the help of people. When you're in trouble and you say to people, help, they will help you. This thing of saying, you know, of, 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 of not wanting to say, I need help, but actually you need help, but you don't want to say you need help. That is pride. You will die in poverty. Be humble enough to ask for help. And God, he gives grace to the humble. People like to help humble people. People like to help people who just say, please, can you help me? Even if you're not planning to help the person. But the moment they humble themselves and say, please help me. It does something on the inside of you. And you stretch out your hand, your resources. You make a phone call for them. You connect them with somebody who can help them. Everybody needs help. Oh, I pray that the body of Christ is hearing this message. God connects you to men who connect you to your next level. God connects you to men who connect you to the next level. So, so if you have the same people around you in your life, it means that you need another man to connect you to the next level. And so if you only are willing to talk to people who you've known for a long time, it means you stay where you are for a long time. You need God to help you to talk to other people. Talk to other people. Relate with other people. Relate with them. I want God to give the church the ability to relate with unbelievers. Hallelujah. Your breakthrough is in the hands of an unbeliever. Listen to this. And I know many will disagree, but those who agree and catch this, this your life will change. If God says yes and man says no, the answer is no. Ah, uh, I, know, I know I'm missing somebody's theology. Because you, you've heard a song say, when God says yes, nobody can say no. That is not true. You need God to say yes, and you need men to also say yes. God must say yes, but men must also sign. Men must also sign. There are signatures you need, and they are not God's signature. They are men's signature. Joseph needed men. <laughs> this will help you. Joseph needed men in his life. Let me help you. Joseph interpreted that dream for the butler and the baker. Remember, in the prison, right? Joseph was gifted, but he was in prison. There are people who are gifted, but your life is in a prison because you have not met the right men or you have not discerned the right men in your life who were sent to help you. If Joseph had an attitude towards the butler and the baker in the prison, he would have missed it. So be kind to everyone who is around you. Just be a nice person. This thing of being a nasty person, you are signing up for poverty. 
Be a nice person to people. Go, be good to people. You lose nothing. Be good to people even if you don't need them today. Don't just be good to people that you need today. Because you never know. The person you are being nasty to today, you might need them next week but one. And so you can frustrate your life by the, having these negative attitudes towards people. Yeah, I don't talk to people. Yeah, and people, are, uh, people have hurt me, so I don't talk to people. I'm so defensive. I've built walls around my life. You have built walls of poverty. Those are walls of poverty that you have built around your life. Those philosophies do not work. Bring down those walls. Allow people to help you. You can't fulfill your destiny outside of the help of other people. You need other people in your life. Hallelujah. God must help us. And most of us, we are guilty of these things on one level or another. And so God must help you. He must help you. I need to drum this in your life. God blesses men through men. He gets breakthroughs to men through men. Your house will come from God through men to you. Your car will come from God through men to you. God has people on planet earth with the answers to the things you are praying for. And some of them are unbelievers. And all you need is the ability to deal with people. And it starts by being a nice person. Many people lose things that they are supposed to get because they are just rude. And they defend, the, they defend that behavior. That's how I am. Hey, no, Sandiri. Hey, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not going to change who I am for you. You better change. Because that is the language of poverty. Okay, with that negative attitude, how far are you going? How far are you going in life? You have an attitude towards somebody who can connect you to somebody who can connect you to your land. But you are praying for your house. And the person with the key, you have the, an attitude towards them. And sometimes the issue is, you know, we look down on people and, 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 and you know, some of those people are destiny connectors. They might not have what I want, but they can connect me to somebody who has what I want. I'll give an example. There was that little maid, uh, you know, in 2 Kings chapter number 5. Naaman was a, a general, a great general, but the Bible says he was a leper. Watch this. And many times we clap hands for, Eli for Elisha, who, who, you know, who God used to heal him, but we don't clap hands for the little maid that connected him to Elisha. That maid that they captured, obviously, Naaman was good to that girl. Otherwise, she would not have rec recommended the, the prophet. She looked at, the, at, 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 at Naaman, the little maid, and says, Hey, my master, you've got leprosy. If only you knew the prophet. I know this prophet, he can help you. This problem will go away. If he had ignored that little maid and said, Ah, what do you know? You're a little maid. He would have missed his healing, and he would have died before his time. Can you imagine? Somebody has got an answer to something that can save your life, and with humility you can connect to it. So Naaman connected to Elisha through the maid. Through the maid. She was a destiny connector. And so she connected him, and he got healed. You know the story. Go and read it in 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter number 5. Back to Joseph. Joseph needed men to fulfill his destiny. He had his dream. That was the prophetic word, but that prophetic word needed men to come, for that prophetic word to come to pass, it needed men. It needed men. You need men. God must help you to understand the mystery of men. What is man that you are so mindful of him and the son of man that you visited him? God knows what he puts in men. Hallelujah. And he put it in men for you. He said, I will give men for your life. I will give men for your life. So in your life, you need men and God must help you to connect with those men. And so Joseph, he dealt with the butler and the baker. He dealt with them well. He was kind to them. He saw them stressed and he helped them. You know, he interpreted their dreams. Watch this. Then the, the, the chief butler he, he, you know, he went to the palace, back to the palace because of the help of Joseph. And, 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 and look at this. And Joseph had said to him, when you get to the palace, remember me. But the Bible says that the chief butler forgot Joseph. Listen to what the Lord said to me. He said, there are many people who their destiny is on hold because men 
forgot them. God did not forget you, but men forgot. So you're stuck in prison. So Joseph for a season was stuck in prison because somebody forgot. Oh, how I wish that you would pray. Lord, remind the man that is key to my next level. Remind him of the good things that I did so that they can connect me to my destiny. Hallelujah. I pray that this is blessing somebody. Hallelujah. It is helping somebody. So, so the chief butler... He said, uh, after the king had had his dream, he said, oh, today I remember my sin. There is a boy who is in prison. He can help the king with this issue. He remembered. So Joseph needed the chief butler to remember him. Chief butler, amen, to remember him. The chief butler spoke to the king, Pharaoh, who Joseph had no access to remember. And the Bible says that, and then the king, he signed a document and he said, fetch Joseph out of the prison. It's not God who called Joseph out of the prison. It was a man called Pharaoh, an unbeliever who did not fear or respect God. But the destiny of Joseph was in the hands of that man. that the grass withers and the flower fades but your word is eternal breaking the chains unlocking your destiny